Another common scheme for dealing with deadlocks is what's called deadlock avoidance. And while it's not used that often, it's a lot of fun to learn about, so I'm going to present it here. The idea is that transactions should have priorities based on their age. So the priority of a transaction might be the time now minus the start time of the transaction. Okay, so that's the age of the transaction. Suppose that you have a transaction TI that wants a lock that TJ currently holds. There's two possible policies that have been proposed, one called wait die and one called wound wait. Let's go through both of them using the illustrative example of a porta potty. So uh, we're going to have two transactions, TI and TJ. Uh, the wait die protocol works like this. If TI has higher priority, meaning TI is older than THA, and TI wants the lock, it wants to get in the porta potty, then TI waits for TJ. But if TI has lower priority than TJ, that means the young person is outside and the older person is in the porta potty, then TI aborts itself. Okay, it dies. So that's the wait die protocol that you see in the first row of pictures here. The wound wait protocol is a little bit different. In this case, we say if TI has higher priority, that is to say the old person is waiting for the porta potty, then TA, TJ aborts. That is to say TI wounds TJ, as in the picture on the lower left. However, if the one outside is the lower priority transaction, then it just waits. So let's analyze deadlock avoidance. First of all, why do these schemes guarantee no deadlocks? Well, let me uh, point out something that the previous images have in common, which is that young people at best wait for old people, and at worst young people die. Okay, so if we have a series of transactions waiting for each other, we know that those transactions are ordered by age, which means there can't be a cycle of waiting, which means there's no deadlock. Okay, so that's why the schemes guarantee that deadlocks won't happen. But there is an important detail to keep this thing from uh, being unfair. And the basic idea is that if a transaction restarts, we're going to make sure that it gets its original timestamp, not the timestamp of when it restarts. Why? Well, basically because we want transactions to eventually get old, even if they die. So basically the fate of a transaction in these schemes is it starts out as a baby, it probably dies a few times or is wounded a few times, aborts, restarts. But eventually, if we keep assigning it its original timestamp, it will get old and it will be able to acquire the locks it needs to succeed. As a final note, transaction age isn't the only way we can prioritize our transactions. We can use other priority schemes like the amount of resources that a transaction has succeeded in consuming in its lifetime, like the number of locks it ever acquired, or the number of IOs it's ever done, and so on. And again, the idea is that a transaction that's done a lot of work should eventually be able to go through and do all of its work before finishing. Otherwise, it'll just keep trying to do work and failing and bog up the system with unuseful work.